control unit power supply, pins one and two. These actually get fed from the main relay, the main ignition relay. So it just goes into the computer, don't need to do anything with that. Ignition control, pin 41 and 40. That goes to the engine connectors, fuel injectors for one, two, three, and four. Pins 96, 70, 44, and 16. Those go to the engine connectors as well. The idle air control solenoid valve. This is what controls your idle. And let's pin 14 and 13. Those both go to the engine connectors. No need to do anything with those. The fuel pump relay control. Now the ECU grounds this pin 32 when you turn the ignition switch on and it will uh, cycle the fuel pump. It's the ground for the fuel pump relay. AC relay control, um, all these with check marks here we covered in the last video. Um, we're not going to use this if you were trying to translate the entire Subaru AC system over then um, then this would be something you'd be interested in I've never actually done an entire Subaru um, system into a Volkswagen um, usually just use the existing system but what this guy does is when the ECU gets the signal from the AC switch when it receives power from the AC switch, it then cycles this guy and, and sends a signal to this relay control. And radiator fan relay one control, this also sends a ground to the radiator fan uh, relay. And what this does is that'll then trigger the radiator fans to kick on. I usually use them in the buses, but not in the Vanigans. The Vanigans already have a um, control system that um, I think works great for Subaru swaps but if you wanted to get more in depth you could wire up a relay using this connector to trigger the fan operation in a van again instead of the uh, temperature switch that's mounted in the radiator radiator fan relay to control I don't use it um, I just use radiator fan relay one control and I just turn you know for the buses I just use the fan one control and um, just turn the fans on high right away but theoretically you could do fan one control controlling low speed and fan two control controlling high speed of the Subaru fans but that's not generally the way I do it I like to just kick the fans on high gear as soon as possible. Self shut off control, pin 63. Um, this just goes to the main ignition relay. Malfunction indicator lamp, this is the check engine light. You can wire this if you want. I generally rely on the OBD2 gauges um, to indicate whether I have a, a check engine light or not. But you can wire it, just put a um, bulb on on this connector here or this pin so um, just get one from Radio Shack a 12 volt bulb and what it will do is um, this will provide the ground for the bulb so provide 12 volts to the bulb and then this will provide the ground next we have uh, engine speed output this is RPM and what you can do is you can actually uh, connect this to a Vanigan's um, tachometer in 1985 and below. You can use a um, the tachometer without modification. 90 or 86 and up, you need to modify the tachometer. And uh, there are a few sites out that show how to modify that tachometer. Or you can add a aftermarket tachometer but usually once again I rely on the OBD2 gauges for RPM so torque control signal pin 79 this actually is an automatic transmission um, pin 
So if you're switching from uh, auto Subaru, so automatic transmission Subaru to a manual transmission VW, you can actually de-pin um, the connector and take this pin out and uh, that'll clean up your harness a little bit or you can just snip it you know a foot or so back or even less if you want and uh, just wrap it up in the harness mass airflow signal for automatic transmission we're also going to take this one out of the uh, harness so you can clip it short or depin the ecu whichever you prefer purge control solenoid valve pin 72 this guy is um going to just remain intact we're not going to do anything with it it just goes to the engine connectors the atmospheric pressure sensor and the pressure sources switching solenoid valve these two pins 26 and 15 those go into the engine bay or you could keep them in the uh, near the ecu if you wish i'll show you what those look like so here are the uh pressure valves so the um, atmospheric pressure sensor and the uh, pressure sources switching solenoid valve out by the mass airflow and you can route these back through the harness and put them with the ECU side you'd need to run a vacuum connection up to the engine or you can just leave them where they are which is what I do and mount them to the um, in the engine bay somewhere. The EGR solenoid valve, pin 71, that just uh, remains unchanged. Don't do anything with that. Goes to the engine connectors. The front oxygen sensor heater signal, that also goes to near the engine connectors. Don't need to do anything with that. On the final page here, we have the rear oxygen sensor heater signal, pin 37 don't need to do anything with that we'll just leave that fuel temperature sensor that one um, you don't need to do anything with there's no way to connect that up anyway so I'll just leave it clipped and uh, in this particular harness it doesn't even have it the uh, fuel level sensor this also is not in the uh, the harness that I have and that's pin 27 but if you do just leave them um, either clipped or you know another thing you can do is just de-pin the harness to remove some of these things that are, aren't um, needed for a VW swap the fuel tank pressure sensor this is another one of those where we're not using it in the VW swap so you can uh, de-pin the ECU or just leave them clipped same thing with the fuel tank pressure control solenoid valve just leave it no need to uh, mess with it the vent control solenoid valve another one of those leave it drain valve same thing AT diagnosis input signal this is the automatic transmission diagnosis input signal just leave it um, or deep in the ECU and then you have all the grounds for various things like the sensors this is a very sensitive ground don't touch it the injectors this is like a high powered kind of ground you don't need to touch that either the ignition system same thing same thing with the power supply control systems the oxygen sensor heater it's all kind of the same thing just leave these do not add any extra grounds to these because they could potentially cause uh, ground loops okay and then one thing that I noticed on one of the pinout sheets that I have that this one does not have is the TCS signal it's pin 61 um, it's transmission control I believe TCS and um, this pin is not needed so just you know also cut it or leave it but if you have a pin on pin 61 that's what it is TCS signal so just disconnect that or de-pin the ECU or just leave it the way it is so that wraps it up for the um, 
ECU pinout uh, video. Uh, I'm assuming there are going to be some questions, so uh, we'll leave it open to the comments and uh, let me know if you have any questions on any particular pins. Um, I may have misread a couple pins, but um, you know, my eyesight's getting kind of bad looking at these things all day. <laughs> but um, let me know if you have any questions and, um, and I'll try and get to them as quickly as I can. The next video we'll do is um, kind of forming the harness and that'll be, um, you know, where to connect what essentially and, and kind of making the harness take shape for how it'll go into a van again or a uh, bus. So I'll see you then.